Hello, my name is Eric Ferguson. In this video, I will demonstrate the sound of close and distance microphones on a drum set and show how phase issues arise when separated mics are mixed together. I will also offer a few basic solutions to dealing with phase challenges when mixing drums. For these examples, I've chosen a loop from a drum recording I made several years ago. The workstation you see is Avid Pro Tools. First, check out the mic inside the kick drum, a Sennheiser MD421. The mic is located near and pointed at the bass drum beater. It's a tight sound, typical of a closed mic drum. Next, let's hear the mic outside the bass drum, which is a Neumann U47 FET. As you can hear, more low frequencies are captured by the outside mic. This is typical and nicely illustrates the near field effect. Frequency radiation varies greatly close to a sound source, and moving a microphone only slightly can make a tremendous change. In this case, I use the near field variations to my advantage, opting to place microphones both in and out of the drum. Tracking two different sounds grants flexibility later during the mixing stage. I'll find a balance. Next, let's listen to the snare top mic. The snare top is snappy, as expected from a close mic. In this example, the single snare top track is actually a mix of a Shure SM57 Dynamic and an AKG451 condenser. I mix the two mics at the console when tracking. Now let's check out the snare bottom mic. Snare bottom tracks typically sound strange on their own, but can add a nice sizzle when mixed judiciously with a snare top. Be careful when recording the snare bottom. The bottom mic captures drum head movement in opposite direction of the snare top mic. This can lead to phase cancellation when the two mics are mixed together, as one mic sees a compression at the same instance the other mic sees a rarefaction. To overcome this problem, always experiment with polarity reversal. I'll try it now. No, it sounds better as I recorded it, so I'll leave the polarity as it was. To round out the near field mics, let's bring in the overheads. Drum overheads, while technically outside the near field of any one particular drum, are well within the near field of the entire kit. As well as capturing cymbals, overheads also bring out the brightness in snare and tom-toms. Let's hear the complete close mic kit. Note how everything is punchy and dry in ambience. Closed mic drums have found popularity in many music styles over the years. In modern rock, however, it is quite common to include farther away sounding room mics in a drum mix. These distance mics, which are placed outside the near field of the sound sources, offer several advantages over their closer placed brothers. For acoustic ensembles, distance miking captures sources and ensembles in a natural, balanced manner. For drums, Room miking offers a unique and exciting color difficult to obtain with digital effects. In this recording, there are two pairs of room mics, one set approximately 5 feet from the drums and the other about 10 feet out. I've placed each pair in a single fader to simplify demonstration. Let's hear the closer room mics. Next, the far room. Note that although the room microphones have a ton of personality, they lack the punchiness of the close mics. For many engineers, this limitation is overcome by mixing both close and far microphones together. Listen to the close mic mix as I fade the near room up in level. Notice how the close mics thin out with increased level. 
This is a result of phase cancellation, as the close and room microphones are separated in distance and capture frequencies in different stages of waveform development. When mixed together, differences in sound wave arrival time cause summation of some frequencies and cancellation of others. This is called comb filtering. I explain the phenomenon in greater detail in the companion magazine article. You'll definitely want to check it out if the concept is new to you. Understanding phase is central to audio engineering. When encountering ugly phase cancellation in a drum mix, always experiment with polarity reversal. The technique, which inverts the waveform and changes the phase of all frequencies by 180 degrees, sometimes works wonders. Let's try it on the closer room mics. Yeah, the tone changed a little, but not necessarily for the better or worse. Now I'll start again with the close mics and fade in the farther room. That sounds good. Now I'll push the level until we hear cancellation. Let's try polarity reversing the room mics to see if the phase can be improved. It's subtle, but both the kick and snare sound fuller. You might need bigger speakers to hear it. Check it out again. When employing both close and room microphones, sometimes the easiest solution to minimizing phase cancellation is to simply move the room mics closer to the drum set. This may not be an effective solution though, as moving closer makes the direct drum sound louder, and thus inadvertently reduces the level of the captured room ambience. Another option exists, however, that can minimize phase interference while still keeping distance mics far from the source. Just a few years ago, before computers dominated the recording process, it was impossible to move microphones after recording was made. Today, with digital audio workstations, simple editing can mimic the effect of room mic movement. By simply dragging room tracks earlier in time, you can effectively move the room microphones closer to the sound source. This has the potential of reducing combing, but without the lowering of ambience level. Watch here as I edit a duplicate near room track, and then time align the snare drum transients to match the snare track. Compare the sound as I toggle between the time adjusted track and the original room. You should notice that the snare is now beefier and punchier. Note, however, that only the snare is aligned. The kick drum is in a slightly different location in the drum set and therefore may still suffer a phase problem. Listen to the kick this time. Unfortunately, the bass drum is thinner with the adjusted track. Too bad, as it made the snare sound way better. Oh well, there is no way to reconcile the inherent distance between the two drums. If I had more time, I might want to keep nudging the room track until I found the ideal compromise between kick and snare phase. <laughs>